You're listening to Were You Still Talking? Yeah, really love your energy. It's, cool. it's fantastic. So welcome back to Were You Still Talking? Today in my studio, I have Mike Patron, and he is the CEO of Business Development and co-founder of Mountain Made Crystal Clear CBD. He's been working in the cannabis and CBD industry for 10 years now. He has had all kinds of experience doing it. He's learned a lot about um, different products and how to bring products to market. And uh, he's had three successful startups. He's been five years of experience in hemp, and he began interacting with CBD products as uh, early as 2012. He's also, he's had over 100,000 direct interactions with cannabis patients in five years, which, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, Mike, welcome to the show. Sorry about that little glitch earlier, uh, but thanks again for being here. Yeah, Joel, no problem. Um, looking forward to uh, con- continuing the discussion. Uh, we, we, we add one rolling forward, we'll go back, cover those points, um, and, and keep the good conversation rolling. So thank you so much for, for having me today. Yeah, I'm really great you could be here. And uh, since, I, uh, since I'm a wide open book for my audience, I will let people know I did the major screw up of not pushing record. So we were talking for a few minutes and then I realized that um, I did a total goof. This is, um, but we're back. We're back, not live. Were you still talking? So the, the biggest thing, the, the most interesting thing here is the uh, Michael's story, how he got started in this in the first place. So Michael, um, if you don't mind, can we go back just a little bit and tell me how you, you got started in, in the CBD and cannabis industry? Yeah, uh, like I was saying before, literally just kind of walked into it. Um, I was employed after college for a really cool small business. They had me out in the field doing some sales business development um, in, the, in the southern part of the country. And uh, after three years, just decided, you know, I was ready for my next opportunity. Um, a friend called me, you know, and, and asked me to move out to tell you I Colorado for the winter to just explore life a little more. I took that opportunity. Um, that spring, it was off season, known as shoulder season, where the town sort of shuts down and, and, and recalibrates for six weeks before the summer rush. And I didn't really want to sit still for six weeks. Right. So I just put my headphones on and was determined that I'm going to walk around this town until I find a job, find something to do. And made it just a few doors up from my apartment and, and, and walked into a gentleman who was unloading boxes from his truck. And, and, you know, he said, what are you doing? I said, I need a job. What are you doing? He said, I'm moving stuff in, opening the doors to the next dispensary, the next weed shop tomorrow. And so I can't pass that up. Why don't you hire me on to run it for the summer? And that's, uh, that's how I got my start in the, in the cannabis space. That was 10 years ago this month. That is really amazing. I didn't even realize it had been 10 years that they were, they'd been doing cannabis in Colorado. Man, time really flies. Yeah. My, uh, I have a niece that just got back from there. She was working the, the winter season there. So that small world. Yeah, that, that's incredible. Talk about fate. Just running right into that. Yeah, you know, it really was. And, and, and you know, 10 years goes by and, um, man, you look back and it's just, it's uh, been an incredible experience. Super fortunate, and uh, again, really look forward to, to chit-chatting about it here a little bit today with you. Yeah, so you were mentioning um, you took some time to sit back and learn the business from other people, and, and one thing you said that I really thought was smart, and that I wish they would do, do more in the NFL, is that you, uh, you looked, listened, um, you had three of them. You had some really good advice there. Yeah, look, listen, and learn. Look, listen, and learn. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that's a, you know, I, I help businesses uh, create training programs and onboarding strategies as part of what I do currently in the cannabis space with my wholesale company. And look, listen, and learn is always on the books during training sessions. I think it's just such an important, um, you know, set of skills to have to, to look at some to, to to listen about the problem, to look for the solution and, and then to execute. Look, listen, and learn. That makes a lot of sense. That that could um, I know that could go a long way for people starting podcasts and any any business. Uh, it, it's really helpful. So how did you go from starting in a shop to to where you are now? And um, and also you 
maybe talk a little bit about the products. I saw three products on the website that I thought were really unique that seem to be based more for the fitness market, which I don't see a lot of. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, the, the company, uh, I have two companies um, that I'm a partner in. Uh, the one you're speaking about is Mountain Made, Mountain Made, M-A-D-E, like Made in the Mountain. Um, our website is mountainmade.life. And the CBD products that we offer are designed um, to support the activated lifestyle. So, you know, to us, you know, that varies. You, you could be, a, a, you know, a, a passionate weekend runner uh, to a professional downhill bike rider um, to a lifestyle enthusiast and anywhere in between. And we believe that our products will help support you um, and, and help you to reach your best or your personal summit, as we refer to it as. Uh, from a branding perspective. But yeah, the, the products are designed uh, with the activated lifestyle in mind. And I, I kind of like that uh, phraseology, activated lifestyle, because on the website, there's a lot of people that are intense, um, like physical, what's the word? Championship level uh, yeah, activists. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, our, so our sponsored athletes, our mountain made mob, the mobsters, and, and quite a few of them are pro card holding athletes. So uh -huh. uh, the top tier of what they do. Yeah. Yeah. But I like that you're saying, you know, anyone could benefit from this that, um, with any level of active lifestyle. I, I like knowing that because those, those athletes are, well, let's face it. They're kind of freaks, like probably like yourself. You do, you do quite a bit yourself. Yeah. I try to, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I think the 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 mob mobsters definitely. I mean, put you know even myself to to shame, but in a good way. You know, they're inspirational, and that's why we choose the mobsters that we choose, um, and have them lead from the front. Right. You know, you think about right. like what uh, energy drink brands have done, and you know now they may show up in in the middle of a downtown area and build a, a giant, you know, jump that someone ramps over on a snowmobile and does two, three, four, five backflips at a time. Most of us in the crowd are never going to do that, but to inspire to be that and to create better patterns and habits in your lifestyle so that you get out and, and reach your own personal goals, that's the connection. That's the bridge. You know, just because you drink an energy drink and, and go watch someone do something like that doesn't necessarily mean that that that's an attainable goal or a desirable goal for you. But, you know, if it gets you up and out of bed and, um, you know, more active and living a healthier uh, way about your life, then, then I feel like it did its job. Um, so we're kind of trying to tailor the, the mobster program and in, in the product offerings by the company with that in mind. That's a really good philosophy, in my opinion. Because, like, yeah, I know I can't do a lot of the things I see my favorite athletes doing, but it's, it's inspiring. It's a, in, extremely inspiring and, uh, yeah, definitely motivating. That's an awesome thing. I also noticed you actually have on that website, and maybe you have this in all your products, you actually have some product testing right there that people can look at. And, um, that seems unique to me. Sure. So our products, we, uh, the trademark crystal clear, so crystal clear CBD, um, is the way that we refer to the, the CBD molecule that we use. And the reason being is, you know, we have um, real tight thresholds in place for product quality control, zero pesticides, zero heavy metals, zero residual solvents. Our potencies are always within 5% of what we're saying they should be. Um, so very tight quality control parameters. And, and what that helps people do is find their baseline more accurately, which is a problem with a lot of CBD products and an issue that people like yourself, when, when you know, you, you said, I've tried CBD and haven't really found success yet. Some of the reasons is a lot of these products are low dose um, and science is showing that high doses of CBD are where the therapeutic value lies. And then also consistent titration and a lot of the delivery systems like the liquids, the oils, the tinctures that you see on the shelf just aren't able to offer uh, consistency per dose, you know. So, again, Crystal Clear CBD, the point of, of our products is to pro provide a high dose 
yeah, a, a very, very consistent product across the board. That makes a lot of sense. And the, I mean, when I, when I look at CBD products, I've had some success. Uh, most of my, my difficulty is pain, chronic pain. And I've, you know, I have found salves that work, but I've found a lot of things that don't work. And I also see a lot of products that um, I have no idea what they are. You know, they there's products in every local uh, pharmacy store now, or every every local department store has CBD products, and there's no one there that necessarily knows what they are or what they're going to do. And the labels, uh, sometimes I think it's be because they can't say much, but they don't say much about them. And um, also, you know, as I'm sure you know, they're they're spendy. They're really spendy. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that, that that can change, that price point can come down to where they're not so, um, it's not so prohibitive. Yeah, you know, a lot of it is cost prohibitive. It, I, and thank you for doing such a great job on your due diligence, checking out the company. That's wonderful. You'll notice our price points are a fraction um, of what other people's are. And there's several reasons for that is one, we source our CBD molecule direct from the manufacturer. So we don't run it through a multiple brokers and everyone putting a markup on it. Um, two, we produce all our product in house. A large percentage of the CBD products in the marketplace are, are made through co-packers. You know what a co-packer is? is a big factory that makes certain consumable items, and all you do is send them your artwork for your brand. They print out a label, slap it on the same product that 10 other brands have with their labels on it and sell it back to you, and then you sell it either wholesale or retail. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those co-packers are driving you know, the cost up, way up. And in and, and these brands that just want to try and get rich quick off CBD, slapping a label on it, running the market, you know, they're paying more for their product than it costs us to produce. So we've held, you know, a, a much lower price point on the retail end of things um, just to allow people to take CBD at a high dose, you know, and, and, and not see their 30 or 60 count bottle as something to hoard but something to enjoy and use as needed mm -hmm. um, with a price point that allows for a, a significant portion um, of folks to, to buy more as needed um, and, and, and to take it and enjoy it. And that's really, really awesome. And that's what, you know, all of us hope for, for the entire market of cannabis and CBD products and hemp products and all these things that are, they're so new to uh, the American way of life. And they're, you know, people seem really confused about them. And the market seems pretty crazy right now. I also wanted to just check in with you about the current crisis. Has that made, like, how is your business handling that? Or, you know, have you had more sales or less sales or has it made a difference? Yeah, you know, we're we're holding steady. We haven't really seen a, a drop nor an increase. It's everything's kind of steady as she goes. Um, you know, which is fine. I know some companies are seeing an increase in their online sales, but that's you know, a lot of that correlates to them closing the door on their retail. We don't have brick and mortar. We do sell wholesale to other people that have brick and mortar. Um and I think, you know, there was a run you know, two weeks ago in the Colorado cannabis space where people went out and panic bought because we didn't know if the dispensaries would be deemed essential, which they would. Um, in the past week, week and a half, the sales have kind of slowed back down. Um, and now more people's paychecks are coming through. The stimulus money's hopefully getting distributed. So we're expecting sales, especially around 420, to spike again. Um, normally, April is an overwhelmingly busy month. But with the current situation in the country, it's, you know, at least for us, we're holding steady. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this crisis create a significant amount of washout in the CBD space. There's so many new companies. Uh, there's so many people that pulled leases on brick and mortar space for CBD retail. There's so many people that were mandated by their co-packers to buy minimum amounts of inventory, which are significant. 
you know, so they're not as in control of their business models as other folks. And I think that that'll have a damaging effect on the space, uh, allowing for other companies to then enter after the crisis. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because <clears throat> in the uh, the cannabis market, I'm in Eugene, Oregon, and I don't know if anyone's heard of Oregon out there, but we're kind of into cannabis here. And um, I mean, there's a shop every you you can barely throw a rock and not hit a, a shop. So yeah, I'm kind of curious how that's going to work over the next few weeks. And I was, it sounds like I saw that there was a rush on cannabis products. Um, because I live here, I seem to get, uh, I don't really use it anymore because it's too powerful for me at my age. And uh, yeah, it just hasn't been, a, I haven't been using it for a long time, but people still give it to me because everyone grows it because they can. And a lot of people were waiting 30 years for this, this time where we can grow it for legally. Um, but anyway, the, there's a lot of shops around here and I'm, I'm curious how that's going to go. I did hear there was a huge, I mean, it was, it was purely, um, social media stuff. So I couldn't believe it, but I heard there was a huge, uh, jump in the market. It was the first week, week and a half that this was happening. And what you just said makes a lot of sense that of course people are going to go out and panic buy like, like everything else. I'm kind of surprised the liquor stores still had liquor in them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so we're just, you know, uh, again, uh, Mountain Maid is running a pretty hefty um, sale right now. We're doing buy any bottle of build, which is our flagship product, our 50 milligram CBD tablet and get your choice of either a boost or a recover for free. Um, just knowing that some people are hurting financially right now. So trying to step up and do our part um, and make sure that, you know, that high dose regimen is something that people can still achieve from a financial standpoint. Um, so r really just going, you know, how can we help? Um, we're running another program where for every bottle that's purchased, we're donating a dollar to the food bank. Uh, we supported the food bank with almost 700 meals in the past uh, two weeks. So, you know, it's uh, just an opportunity for us to step up and, and, and do our best to lead from the front. That's really awesome. Um, I know that's happening all over the country, but it, it's always really nice to hear um, when any company or individual is, is doing that kind of stuff. I think the food banks sometimes get forgotten in every city. So I think that's really awesome. Um, another thing I wanted to, to ask you about was your, your, personal interact your personal interactions with people like... Um, you know what? What have you? What have been the biggest benefits for for patients that you've seen with CBD? Yeah, I mean, I think a, you know a big market for for. I mean, the biggest benefit for anyone with CBD or cannabis therapy is just taking um, the matter into your own hands. You know, and that's not you know, saying that there's not a place for, for other medications, you know, et cetera. But I think it gives people an opportunity to step back and say, I think some of these issues or problems can be solved differently. Um, I think folks enjoy the, the benefit of, you know, beginning to know and better understand what they're putting in their bodies, you know, because they'll, they'll, you know, I've seen cannabis and CBD patients latch on to learning more about cannabis and hemp. Um, so I think that's probably the greatest benefit there. But as far as ailments go, I mean, obviously in Colorado, you know, you look at the, how many people went out and got their medical marijuana cards, the majority of them are going to be pain patients. Um, but I think that in the realm of CBD, you see a lot for just basic, you know, general mental health issues, you know, anxiety, um, light to mild depression, um, mood balance. You know, Mountain made with our high dose CBD tablets. We find that a high dose of crystal clear CBD really promotes solid cognition. You know, where your brain is just thinking more efficiently, uh, better, so to speak, clear, more streamlined. You know, that's what I've really found out of the past, you know, year plus of, you know, taking high and large, you know, volume of CBD every day. Um, I just think that my brain works better. Wow, that's that's my pretty brain amazing. Works better. Yeah, yeah, you know, it just lends itself to, to 
you know, more of your day-to-day going a little bit smoother, a little bit easier, a little more in control. So it could almost be, it's almost like microdosing uh, other products. Uh, a little. Yeah, I but, mean, but, from like a nootropic standpoint, you know, just feeding your brain um, tools uh, that, that, it, that it's asking for, mm-hmm. you know. That's something that really is of great interest to me because I've had a bizarre issue with brain fog for a year and a half now. Um, so I'm always looking for something that might might do something. I've tried several over um, several different natural products that have basically done nothing. So yeah, I'm always looking for something else to help my brain work better, and I'm sure a lot of sure. people are. Yeah, I think it's the main component of, of why a lot of our customers, you know, 90% of our customers come back month to month to month. It's just, it, it really does, you know, go in and balance your systems and, and what a great system to balance. Mm-hmm. You know? um, so that that's, you know, massive to me. I know a lot of people find uh, relief from sleep ailment with, with CBD. CBD in itself isn't sedative. When you start to add in some various terpenes and or trace amounts of THC, it can be sedative. But just, again, the mental clarity and the relaxation, people find that they start to fall into much better sleep patterns as well. Our recover line, what we do, because it's not completely sedative, is we throw in a little bit of magnolia, which is a nice cortisol blocker, natural, helps you really hit a strong, deep state of REM and sleep. Um, so it, it's a fantastic product and gets pretty strong reviews as far as, you know, again, it's not sleep aid in the sense that it's sedative, mm-hmm. but just sleep management, you know, sleep management tool or resource. Well, that's important. I know that a, a big portion of America is sleep deprived. Um, so that's that's an extremely helpful product. Have you looked into other um, other types of products like psilocybin and things like this, just, just just as a researcher to see um, what kind of benefits they might have, or you know, it, when they do become legal? Has that ever has that been a part of your your research at all? No, not really. I mean, especially the cannabis space keeps me so busy. Right. You know, I think I have enough. <laughs> enough of the piece of the pie um, at this point, although Denver did decriminalize, you know, small amounts of personal use for psilocybin. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, it develop into its own market mm-hmm. uh, here at some point. Um, but no, mostly my focus is in, in cannabis and hemp. And as far as that goes, um, when you, how does it compare? How does the the industry and the space compare to to ten years ago? How has it changed uh, in ten yeah, years? Yeah, besides, yeah, the, you know, I mean, it's it's just totally different, right? I mean, ten years ago, we were essentially glorified drug dealers. Um, you know, we went from no regulation to to some regulation to full regulation. Um, but I mean, you just look at it. I mean, ten years ago. When, you know, someone would come into the dispensary and want to join, I would take out a pack of zigzags and, and take my hands with no gloves and, and grind the product down and put it in the paper and lick it and roll it and hand it to them. Oh, you know, and there okay. Was, you know, <laughs> nothing that there was, there was, that was completely legal and no one was right. even paying attention, right? Because that's how you bought a joint, right? Right. You went right. to your dealer's house, they rolled your joint and handed it to you. You know, and nowadays, you know, three, three rolls, they're not even called joints anymore. Pre rolls, the you know the paper comes pre coned from a machine. People wear gloves and schmocks and hair nets and grind it down and wear gloves and you know the whole the whole nine and then it gets tested for heavy metals and pesticides and microbials and potency and a batch label and a strain and and, and you know the, the the whole nine, which I think is wonderful. Mm-hmm. But if you just look at that jump from ten years ago to rolling someone a joint, hand rolling someone a joint to now. You know, it's a completely different widget, right? It's a completely different industry, mostly for the good. You know, in my opinion, we're definitely mm-hmm. overregulated in some aspects, but you know, it's still also a little bit of a fear-based industry. Right. You know, where CBD is running wide open um, because you know CBD is non-intoxicating, 
right? It's not like THC where it's going to, you know, create a psychotropic effect. It definitely has a euphoria to CBD, but not a psychotropic, you know, effect. So, And that's a good point to make. Um, I think most of my listeners understand this, but in case there's uh, uh, aunts and uncles and <laughs> family members who aren't clear about that, CBD is a very different product than, um, than cannabis and than THC. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, it's, you know, in general, hemp and cannabis are different. They're in the same family. Uh, hemp, uh, the genetics in hemp promote, you know, high output of CBD with trace amounts of THC. The cannabis plant promotes, you know, high output of THC with trace or zero amounts of CBD and other cannabinoid. Um, so, you know, they're just sort of, sort of polar opposite of each other. Uh, they both have pros and cons to them. And then they both can produce various, you know, products and, and uses um, and experiences. But TBD for a lot of people feels safer um, just because, again, it's euphoric but not intoxicating like TC can feel, you know, for, for quite a few people. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the difficulty I have with THC now is that the side effects, what they what they really refer to as side effects these days are pretty intense. I mean, if you're taking it for uh, for better sleep or for pain or for um, indigestion, digestion issues, whatever it is, the side effects can be pretty strong. It's um, that's what I find. So a lot of times it seems like CBD can be a, a better alternative, you know, that doesn't have those extreme effects. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and again, I think CBD when used in high doses and used consistently in high dose, I'm saying anywhere from 100 to, to 500 milligrams a day, um, depending on, on what you're you know, looking to accomplish. I'll range anywhere from two to 500 milligrams a day. Um, I have for a significant amount of time and I just, I love it. Yeah. And that does seem like a lot. That sounds like a, a pretty high dose. So um, you know, I so mean, it makes the sense. studies in Israel are coming out saying your toxicity levels, you know, aren't, aren't going to really kick in until 1,500 milligrams. You know, so when you think of it like that, I'm in a very safe threshold. You know, most people feel like it really seems like an extreme dose because they're used to seeing those tinctures on the shelf and they're promoting, you know, three to 10 milligrams a, a day. And it's, you know, they're wondering why people aren't coming back rebuying the product is, People just aren't sure if they're actually having a, an effect, and, and in most cases, they're not. You know. And why are they doing that? Why is why is CBD being being put in everything? Is it just to to mar so they can charge a lot for a candy bar? It, it is, and it's just you know marketing, and everyone's trying to jump on this bandwagon, and, and you know how it is. People always want to get rich overnight, right? Right. You know, right. if you look back at like the the soda or pop industry, the cereal industry. Um, you know, back then, like soda was considered an elixir. And then once people saw, oh, all I got to do is, you know, say it'll make you six feet tall and rich, people will buy this off me. What they're really getting at is people enjoy carbonated beverages. So until the market kind of evened that out, like what they really wanted out of soda, people were throwing it in anything and everything, calling it whatever they wanted to, trying to get rich. When the cards fell, a few companies came out with an actual usable product, and they did really well for themselves. Right. You know, same with cereal. You know, cereal wasn't a thing until it became a thing, and then everyone jumped on board. Oh, this cereal will do this, that, and the other, and it got out of control. People bought in, and then it didn't work, and then they didn't buy, and then people folded. It went under, and then the industry emerged with the sellable product, which was cereal. Breakfast cereal, cut and dry, that's it, right? Not a miracle right. drug. Oh, right. Well, and breakfast cereal is good. Yeah, and they, had, they added sugar to it, and that's how they sold it. They, uh... Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, that's where CBD is at is, you know, people are still looking at it going, oh, you know, we're going to we're gonna put it in um, everything and make crazy claims, and who cares about dosing? And, you know, people will just buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. Right, right. And now the consumers, thank God are finally coming around saying, well, what does it really do and why? Is it in beard oil or chapstick or I don't get it? And and that's going to create washouts. 
You know, we saw the same thing in cannabis. Everyone Uh rushed to put cannabis in everything, and, you know, 80% of those products are no longer on the shelves, and and for a good reason, right? Right, right. Yeah, I noticed noticed that. Uh (laughs) They did put cannabis. Still, I can I can get any product I can think of with cannabis in it if I go to enough dispensaries. Anything I can think of. Um, the other thing yeah. I was curious about, which you kind of touched on, is um, is is testing and and research into CBD. Is I know that's growing some. Are there? But there is because it's. Um, is there you know, like is there enough of that going on? How um, as far as research into what the product can do and and, you know, amounts and things like where do, do you guys use private labs for everything you do? How do you, how do you even yeah, find that? Yeah, we use third party labs. Again, the labs aren't really telling us like what the molecule will do in your body. They're just telling us how much of that molecule is in your product. Mm-hmm. Um, the research that's really coming out saying, you know, what the, the CBD or the other cannabinoids are doing in your body is a lot of it's found out of Israel, you know, because they're very open to testing and running clinical trials and studies on, on cannabis and, and cannabinoids. So that's where a lot of your good information and qualified information is coming from. You know, I could talk to you all day anecdotally right. about what I've right. seen. You know, I've helped 100,000 patients in Colorado directly, you know, and, and help dial them in with cannabis and CBD but, you know, you always have people that will say, well, that's just what you think. Okay. You know, and I understand that. But, mm-hmm. you know, you look into the eyes of someone with a severe ailment and they're telling you they're getting better. And there's a little bit of a trust factor built into that, too. Right. You know? Absolutely. So science will begin proving what some of us in Colorado and Oregon already know. Yeah. Science will, quote unquote, prove that. Right. Uh, yeah. And I know that a lot of our science in America is um, is money based, is based on uh, you know how much they can sell a product for. So CBD is probably harder to get. Is, they don't see a profit off it yet. So those tests are slower. And also the scientific studies take ten to twenty years um, for uh, a lot of those studies to to be well first to be done. And then to be peer reviewed, and then again, you know, it takes a long time, long time. Whereas, yeah, people like yourself are just moving forward because a lot of people need help. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, they're they're buying into a hope. And and but once the customer base gets more demanding out of their product, that's when you know people are forced out and innovation is forced in. Right. Well, it sounds like you have done a lot of research. Has that just been as part of your, like, part of your job? Or, like, where do you get, where where have you um, gotten the best information? Or has it been from dealing with people, individuals, you know, dealing with individuals? Is there, uh, like, do you have gurus out there that help you along? Where where do you get your, your information? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm you know... I talk to a lot of people in network. We trade information. We talk to each other about what we've seen. You know, when you're in mm-hmm. the industry, you're you're in it. Right. You know? and well, that makes sense. Again, my experience, you know, in, in medical and in recreational retail setting and just knowing how to just talk to people and ask open-ended questions and, you know, look, listen, and learning and just being really focused on trying to get the most out of that experience has been, you know, really beneficial. You know, and that's what I tell people. You go on LinkedIn and everyone's a consultant on cannabis and hemp and they've been doing it for six months. It's a joke. Oh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> all these brands are promising you the moon. And so, so, you know, so get on the phone and say, well, what's your experience level? Is you, have you been, you know, and, and then again, you know, it's just all, you know, self-qualifying. Yes. You know, people will roll yep. in their quote unquote experience because, they smoked a joint under the bleachers once yep. 10 years ago. So now they have 10 years experience too. I understand you know, this and completely. You can't even argue with those people. You just go, okay, you know, yep. great, good for you. I'm glad. You know, yep. but the reality is, is most people don't have an extensive experience level in either hemp or cannabis. And they're just trying to be the new thing. If you looked at my LinkedIn, I actually in my presentation of my name, what I do for a living in, in like that little, sentence title, 
I have, I do not use the word hemp, CBD, or cannabis in it at all, or consultant, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. that's how I can identify who on LinkedIn has experience and, and who doesn't. Right. Is they'll put can a consultant or CEO of cannabis this or CEO of hemp that, and I'm like, you're you're new, you're new, you know. So I purposely don't have it in those keywords because I don't need it. My experience speaks for itself. That's that makes a lot of sense, and it's funny how I see the same thing in in the podcast industry. Is that most of us are new, to be honest, because it's exploded in the last year. Um, and I see a lot of people who, uh, and I've talked to them, who are ready to be podcast consultants, and um, right. it's, it's same kind of thing. It's like, well, how are you going to be a podcast consultant? You don't. No one listens to your podcast, and you you just bought the cheapest mic you could find. And I've had people say, oh, you should be, you could, you should help people with podcasts. I'm like, well, I've done not, you know, when I get to a thousand, maybe, but then I'll be too busy. So, so I, I get yeah, it. You know, totally and, and, understand. and there's nothing wrong with being new. I mean, I was new <laughs> 10 years ago and there's people that have been doing it, you know, underground for, you know, 20, 30 years before me and they oh, paved yeah. the way for me to have yeah. a way, but you know, it's just being new and humble and yeah. putting in that base and, level work and going, mm-hmm. I'm here to learn, you know, not being here. And social media has made it a thing. You know, we all want to self-qualify and look bigger and busier and better than we are. Um, and, and, you know, I just didn't grow up with, you know, it, that environment just wasn't even accessible. So now it is, and, and people want to utilize it. And, and you know, that if that's someone's path, that's, that's you know, great for them. Um, but, you know, I, I think where I get upset is when it affects the consumer, the customer, and they get duped by someone's BS who's selling something that they don't even understand, you know, to be the next cannabis guru. And they're too worried about being the next this, that, or the other to just be something for someone. That makes a lot of sense. I, I can really relate to that. Yeah. I, I have trouble growing my own social media for kind of that same reason. I, I never, I don't know. Uh, I... I definitely have the ego for it because I started a podcast, but it, yeah, to, to throw, a, to be out there every day saying, trying to say that you're the greatest is, um, I don't know, I have a hard time with it as well. Um, well, I should probably start to wrap this up. I really, I know you've got a lot going on today because you said you doing several podcasts in a day with, which I find, uh, pretty amazing. That's a lot of energy. Um, so I really, I really appreciate you being on and you, you, you have more than one, uh, Mountain Maid is just one of your businesses, right? It is. Yes. You can find Mountain Maid again, Mountain Maid, M-A-D-E, Mountain Maid dot life. Uh, that's the CBD company that I'm a partner in. And then I've had a wholesale company in the cannabis space for over five years in Colorado. Um, currently taking on new clients nationwide and that's found at M. Patchen, P A C H A N L T D M Patchen L T D dot com. Um, again, that's you know, reflective of the ten years experience that I've spent in cannabis. I help people build and develop brands, products, get them shelf placement, um, do some advisory and oversight work through that company as well. Oh, that's really awesome. It's it's great that you're passing on your expertise, that you're helping others do what you're doing. I think that's I think that's really great. It, that's what people need. Um, experience, passing on experience. And yeah. So um, let me just say, you've been listening to, were you still talking? This is Joel Albrecht. And my guest today has been Mike Patchen of Mountain Made, Crystal Clear CBD, and a couple other products that he just mentioned. And um, I will put links to his website in the in the notes. So check those out. Wow, Mike, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you coming on and, and taking some time with with us today. Yeah, Joel, thank you so much for your time. And uh, after we're done with the podcast, I'll shoot you some fun, get some Mountain Made CD in your hand, and then you can tell your listeners what you think about our product. Oh, I will. I will, too. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. And uh, as I always say, be good to each other.